what words do you want to use to describe that game? Seriously, what words do you want to use? Pathetic, embarrassing, spineless. It wasn't spineless. That had a we had Ericsson there. We had Casemiro there. We had Rashford on for the second half. What was that from United? Brentford, Man City, Liverpool, Aston Villa, Newcastle, Sevilla. Man United crumble in hostile atmospheres. Man United, I think, in what are we, seven away defeats with this season, we've conceded like 28. Got absolutely atrocious. Man United went from 2 0 up in that leg, again, that whole tie against Sevilla, to lose 5 2. And I know that there are going to be fingers pointed at plenty of individuals, and I will do that, and I will speak about that. What was that? Really, what was that? It was always going to be a tough game there tonight. But I tell you what, to do that in the first 10 minutes, right? To do that in the first 10 minutes, what are you doing? Both David De Gea and Maguire are at fault for that goal. This situation here. Eric, so not Eric Ten Hag, sorry. Let me get rid of these. Get those off there as well. Get that up there. David Harry in this situation, he should be looking up and seeing that Harry Maguire has got two men around him and he shouldn't be receiving the ball there. However, and I double circle him, Maguire shouldn't be asking for the ball. That's what I mean. They are both at fault there. But David De Gea in that... Honestly, right? If you can't see that David De Gea is a problem inside this Manchester United team. You are just not looking at the evidence in front of your eyes because you do not want to see it. This is no agenda. I love what he's done for the club. And I'm not basing it off the back of what I've seen there tonight. I'm basing it off what I've seen this season. It's just tonight was probably the most extreme example of it. But I tell you what, hmm, we're not going to miss Maguire and Martinez. We're not going to miss Martinez and Varane. My word. That exact same situation here where he received the ball this was Man United against Real Betis. That's David De Gea passing to uh, Martinez. One ball to him there. What does he do in this situation? A quick, do, do, easy. World class. Ball gone. Not a problem. Harry Maguire has to be sold in the summer. Simple as that. Done and dusted. I didn't need that performance there tonight to know that that is the truth. He doesn't have a future at Manchester United. And, and that's what I mean. David De Gea, look, I can't blame De Gea for the fact that he's been... That's how he's trying to play out from the back with the ball. And he's been doing that with Martinez and Varane. But Dave, you've got Maguire in front of you now. You might play slightly differently. Maybe that's got to come from the management down. But what an absolute calamity. What an absolutely atrocious team performance that was. I'd love to be able to just point the fact... Point, point the finger and say, oh, look, we didn't have Martinez and Varane. That's why we lost. Come on. Ericsson, Casemiro, everybody there in that team, I would say bar Anthony. Whoa. Where was Sancho in that game? Marcus Rashford and Luke Shaw coming on half fit. Martial going off injured. Casemiro getting another suspension. Collecting suspensions like stamps. But ultimately, it's going to be David De Gea and it's going to be Maguire that steal the headlines. But Ten Hag is going to be pissed. Because it was pathetic. That was absolutely pathetic. Man United, lucky to go in 1 0 down at half time. You'd think, all right, they're going to, you know, come out in the second half. We've got Shaw and Rashford on. Sweet. We'll kick on. We'll pretend that first half didn't happen and we'll go. No, we're 2 0 down within 35 seconds. I, I, it came off his shoulder. And De Gea was, uh, he was just in the wrong position off his line. Couldn't get back quick enough. I mean, David De Gea is going to take all the headlines there. I've already, I mean, I've no doubt I'm going to speak about him in the live stream tomorrow. And I've spoken about him many a time this season. And I repeat that same thing that I said earlier. If you do not think that David De Gea is a problem inside this Manchester United team for what Eric Ten Hag wants, then you are ignoring the mountain pile of evidence that continues to build. Just in the same way that Harry Maguire is a problem inside this Manchester United team for how Eric Ten Hag wants to play. Now, that's a bit of an easier one. Maguire hasn't been here for 10 years. There's no emotion attached to that. So people can easily say, bin Maguire off. Easy. Let's get someone else in. Happy days. I'm not saying bin David De Gea off. I'm saying, just look at what you're seeing, people. It's painful. Sometimes. I thought we'd seen the end of those performances this season. I'll tell you what. 
of all the years for us to really go at it in the top four and actually, you know, have a really genuine, decent run inside all three competitions. We have to choose this year. My God. When it my injuries are just this uh, with the it was this season with the World Cup. With 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 the strength in depth that we've got, or the lack thereof, and the mid season World Cup. An inevitable drop off was going to cap was going to come and it was going to happen. But look at that. As I said, I want to reiterate that that was the main problem tonight. I can speak about De Gea and I can speak about Maguire and I just did for quite a while. That's the main problem here tonight. So much evidence mounting about Manchester United's problems away from home, in atmospheres that aren't welcome. Oh, you're Old Trafford. Come on in, lads. Yeah, come on in. Welcome in. In tougher environments, Man United crumbled. And I tell you what. Again, and I've said this before. Right? Man United against Newcastle. When we lost away from home, what was it? Newcastle pressed with intensity. They pressed David De Gea and Manchester United's defence and we crumbled. Everton didn't. Brighton didn't. Sevilla didn't at home and neither did Forest away. And what happened? Three draw, three wins and a draw. What happened there tonight? Sevilla pressed from the start and Manchester United conceded within the first 10 minutes. That is the rule, number one rule. Away from home in tough environments. Fucking see the first 15 minutes out. It's schoolboy. And it was a schoolboy. Like, just look at the look at the what you're doing. Like everybody, everybody's at fault there. David De Gea and Maguire. Maguire shouldn't have been asking for it. De Gea should have had the awareness to go, hold on. You're crap. Let me pass to someone else in this environment. But he didn't. What's the, how is Eric Ten Hag going to react to that? Because if we're going to play, if we're going to play one team this season, probably in terms of form and how they're playing, that press with intensity, it's going to be Brighton. I am not looking forward to that game. Luke Shaw limped off. Martial went off with an injury. Who could have predicted that coming? I never saw it. Apart from the fact that everybody saw it coming. Apart from the fact that we know we need a number nine. Vegas came on, and yeah, I, I've. I appreciated the work that Vecors did earlier this season. But Vecors shouldn't be getting a, a, a short-term deal at United. He, he won't be here next year, which means we probably need two strikers. And I've told you, I think Mar if Martial, Martial takes the position of Vecors in terms of being the backup next season, then probably he's got a spot in the squad. But we need that number nine. We've missed one all season. Ten Hag has done this entire campaign without a fit, world-class number nine. And it's, it's extremely difficult to do. In modern football, no, no, in modern football, just in football in general, you need your number nine. You need your goal scorer for the balance of the team, the shape of the team, and the goals. As I said, probably the only player who comes out with any sort of real credit was Anthony in that first half. Actually wanting the ball, bringing it forward. Every single other player just crumbled, went inside themselves in that atmosphere. And it's happened so often this season that it's painful. But tonight, the David De Gea and Harry Maguire culpable for well, that I, I haven't even mentioned that third goal. What the hell was David De Gea doing when that ball dropped? From, honestly, answers on a postcard. Someone tell me, please, what David De Gea was trying to do there? I because I I've got absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea. In my opinion. Manchester United need a goalkeeper this summer and I've been lambasted for it. I was lambasted for speaking out about Ronaldo before, well, it ended up happening. And I've done the same thing with David De Gea and I understand and appreciate how much he's done for the club, but you have to remove your emotion. You have to stick. Look at what you've got in front of you. And it's easy for us to say. We're just fans watching it. It's more difficult. You can't just... I'm not saying boot him out. I just... He's going to be pissed. Ten Hag will be angry that the players did that. There's no there's no shame in losing a game of football when you play up against a better opposition. We're a better team than Sevilla. Game should have been dead and buried in that first half at Old Trafford. When Anthony hit the post, I think Vecors had a chance as well. Instead, 2-0 turned to 5-2. We're cra crashed out of Europe. We've now got the FA Cup semi-final against Brighton on Sunday. Shaw's limping. Martial's gone out injured. Rashford's half fit. Sabitzer was definitely half fit. I, I didn't mention him here. It's almost like we missed Bruno. End of Europe. I've already cancelled my hotel. Bar humbug. 